we may or may not want to use split tunneling, but if we do, now's a good time to actually set it up and to configure it in DHCP if that's what we want to use to make split tunneling happen. Now we can definitely configure it after we get our VPN all set up, but if we do, we may have to reboot the VPN server and delete some leases uh, in DHCP in order to make it work. And that's because our routing and remote access VPN server here, VPN01, grabs some DHCP information and reserves it specifically for clients. So if we make a change to that DHCP scope, then we have to force it to grab new information. So now let's say we want to use split tunneling. What we need to do is to tell basically the VPN client what subnets are on our internal LAN and to route that traffic through the VPN connection. And there are a couple different ways we can do this. We can do it with DHCP. We can also do it uh, with CMAC or the Connection Manager Administration Kit. All we're doing really is setting up routes on the VPN client. So by default, whatever subnet we're connecting to on our VPN server, so our VPN client is going to connect to the external IP address, but it's going to get an internal IP address on the, in our case, on the same subnet that our VPN server's internal NIC is on. So it's 192.168.6. So it's going to route any traffic to that subnet through the VPN automatically. So there's no extra configuration there. But what about if we have other subnets? Like I've got 192.168.7 subnet. I want, if this VPN client is trying to access that subnet, I want it to go through the VPN in order to do that if I'm using split tunneling. If I don't configure this, then it's not going to know, hey, if I'm trying to get to this 192.168.7 subnet, it's actually going to try to go out there on the internet and obviously it won't find it. So if I have other subnets, like let's say 192.168.8 uh, subnet, then I would need to specify this, and we'll see here. Let's go over to our DHCP server and configure this. Okay, so I'm going to launch my DHCP snap-in, and let's right-click, add server. My DHCP server is DC01, and here's my scope, 192.168.6.0. So this is the internal, the same subnet is the internal NIC of my VPN server. And we're going to set it up so that my VPN clients will get an IP address from this scope and this address pool. So you can see 192.168.6.140 through 164 are the IP addresses I've got set up. Now I've got some scope options here that specify the default gateway. Uh, DNS servers and DNS domain name. So I'm going to right click on scope options. Let's click on configure scope, scope options. And the one we want to add if we want to use split tunneling is classless static routes. So I'll go ahead and check that. Let's click on add route. So if I want to add the route for 192.168.7.0 and the subnet is 255.255.255.0. I need to specify what router it needs to use. And this router is going to be the gateway, basically, for this particular subnet, 192.168.6.254. Go ahead and click OK. So then this route will show up on our VPN clients now. If I had another one, like let's say for the subnet 192.168.8.0, this subnet, I would set up another route and again, send it to the default gateway on the subnet that my VPN clients are going to be on. And click OK. So now that's set up again, we'll see this more uh, a little bit later on when we actually go to connect to the VPN with our clients. Please see part three of this YouTube playlist in order to see how to configure static routes on your VPN server so that routing works properly when you have split tunneling configured. For complete VPN training, please go to itdvds.com.